There has been over a hundred uncontrolled fires in skyscrapers in the last 50 years, and never has one collapsed or come close to collapsing from fire. Only earthquakes and demolitions have brought these modern structures down. Then we look at the fires in Building 7, and they would be called moderate by any firefighting manual, but still the building collapsed. Building 7 had sporadic fires in it for six hours. Other skyscrapers, as we mentioned, have burned for days or even weeks. Why don't they collapse? Because steel doesn't begin to weaken until after 2,000 degrees of temperature. Around 2,500, it becomes red hot, and at around 3,000 degrees, starts to melt. Another example of this was the Windsor Building in Madrid, Spain, in mid-February of 2005. It burned for two days at temperatures much higher, with white-hot flames shooting out of it for hundreds of feet. As we watched the Windsor Building burn, I was amazed to watch the media of the world say, Well, the World Trade Center towers and Building 7 fell from fire, so it's going to fall. We're just waiting for the collapse. But the collapse never came. All the major support pillars held fast. Steel doesn't melt at that temperature. According to official reports, Building 7 wasn't even in the debris field of Tower 1 and 2. And that's why it's important to look at buildings like Bankers Trust. We already talked about it earlier, but let's focus in on it with some detail. It was right up against the South Tower, only about 45 feet away, and large chunks of the South Tower fell directly in to Bankers Trust. But Bankers Trust is like all other modern steel buildings. It's like the big building in Madrid, Spain. Despite the fact that fires raged through many of its floors and that huge pieces of debris fell on top of it and up against it, it didn't collapse. The architect of the World Trade Center Towers, Nomuru Yamasaki, told the press many times before 9-11 that he specifically designed the towers to take massive passenger jetliner impacts. The construction and project manager for the World Trade Center complex, Frank Demartini, told the press multiple times that they designed the towers not to just take one large jetliner impact, but at least two, and not collapse. And other world-renowned engineers and architects went public as well. But that didn't matter for the mainstream media. They simply ignored their protest. Senior firefighter Lou Caccioli, who survived the collapse of the World Trade Centers, reported that bombs were clearly going off inside the structure. He told People Magazine this the day after 9-11. When we spoke to him, he said he couldn't talk about it. Professor Van Romero, Vice President for Research at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology, told the Albuquerque Journal that the implosions of the towers were too mathematical to be a chance result of airplanes and that only controlled demolitions could have brought the buildings down. Then Kevin Ryan, an executive engineer with Underwriters Laboratories, or UL, that certifies most big buildings in America, went public and said, It's impossible. Jet fuel wouldn't have melted the columns in Tower 1 and 2. This is from the organization that underwrote the towers. Then Firefighter Engineering, the oldest engineering publication in United States history, went public and said, there's no way jet fuel made that happen. And stop hauling away the debris. Stop covering up the crime scene. We've got seven different tapes showing different groups of firefighters saying the towers looked like they were brought down by bombs and that they heard explosions. But in the interest of time, here is just one of those clips shot by two French brothers who were making a documentary about New York firefighters on the morning of 9-11. We camped out. It was, it was, it was much worse than it was when we went up. Yeah. Right? Right? We went up and they had everything set up and came down. It was desolate. It was like, holy We came down to the lobby. It was like the first thing there was. There was nobody here. What did we do? We made it outside. We made it about a block. We made it at least two blocks and we started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, it was if if they had detonated. Yeah, detonated. They were planned to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. NBC's Pat Dawson is close to the scene of that attack. Pat? 
Matt, can you hear me? If, the, uh, if we are, yes, I can, Matt. Uh, just moments ago, uh, I spoke to the chief of safety for the New York City Fire Department, who was obviously one of the first people here on the scene after those two planes were crashed into the side, we assume, of the World Trade Center towers, which used to be behind me over there. Um, chief Albert Turry told me that he was here just literally at 10 or 15 minutes after the events that took place this morning. That is the first crash. He had roughly 10 alarms, roughly 200 men in the building trying to effect rescues of some of those civilians who were in there. Uh, and that basically he received word of the possibility of a secondary device, that is another bomb going off. Uh, he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place. And then an hour after the first hit here, with the first crash that took place, he said, uh, there was a, another explosion that took place uh, in one of the towers here. Uh, so obviously, he, according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. The second device he thinks, he speculates, was probably planted in the building. Uh, so that's what we have been told by uh, Albert Turry, who is the uh, chief of safety for the New York City Fire Department. He told me that just moments ago. And a CBS News chopper in the air over the towers reported the same thing. If Jim Smith is with us still in chopper two, Jimmy, you there? Just uh, we saw some kind of explosion. A lot of smoke come out of the top of the tower, and then uh, it collapsed down onto the streets below, much like we saw the first tower just about a half hour ago. Chopper two, as he takes these pictures, Jim. Yes, I, I am here, Michael. Oh, Jim, tell us, tell us what's happening out there. Oh my We just gosh. witnessed oh. some kind of secondary uh, follow-up explosion on oh, the World Trade Center oh, number two. The wall secondary. We've all unfortunately seen the famous photos of victims jumping out of Tower 1 and 2. But that happened in the first 15 minutes while the jet fuel was still burning. Later, we have the photographs of the victims standing in the impact holes from the aircraft begging for help for 20 to 30 minutes. How could they survive heat that would melt through giant four-foot steel girders? The answer is they couldn't. And the firefighters are on record as saying the fires were almost out. The fact is, the temperatures had dropped dramatically. The fires were almost extinguished. The people were in the open wounds in the sides of the buildings begging for help. Help that did come in the form of the valiant firefighters who had the buildings blown up around them. The tape you're about to hear is from the grave. As a valiant firefighter reports that the fires were almost out, and as firefighters went public and said that the fires had almost been extinguished, the federal government ordered them under national security to stop talking to the public and told the media that all the firefighter tapes had malfunctioned, but not before firefighters had rebelled and released segments of tape, a segment you're about to hear. What do you got up there, Steve? I'm still in Boyce Fairway, 74th floor, no smoke or fire problem. The walls are breached, so be careful. Yeah, 10-4, I saw that on 68. Ready, come on over. Ready, come on over by us. Hey, Ryder, folks, one strike. We got two. I saw in the pockets of fire. We should be able to knock it down with two lines. Where you, where you, where you know that? 78 floor, no more 1045 cold lines. What's scaring you, Mario? Seconds before the towers collapsed, blast points could be seen springing up down the sides of the buildings from the top down. Within days of 9-11, Bush and his minions began grandstanding at ground zero, telling us, give up your liberties and we'll protect you. Go along with our invasion of the world and everything will be okay. Then there were all the pre-9-11 warnings from the French, the British, the Egyptians, the Italians, the Russians, the Israelis, the Indians. The list goes on and on, but Condoleezza Rice and George Bush told us they'd never heard of such a plan of al cia to fly hijacked jets into the World Trade Center and Pentagon. It didn't matter if CNN had reported on it back in 1995. Even the Taliban, two months before 9-11, said, Stop Osama, he's about to attack you. What they didn't know is... He was working for Mr. Bush. Uh, I want to add that, you know, the president knew about a month in advance 
before uh, we were attacked here in New York. He got the, me the memo. Yeah, he didn't do anything about it. And we all know that. Now he's here in New York in the convention and he's going to be applauded by, you know, thousands and thousands of people. This is ridiculous. Howard Dean recently seemed to muse aloud whether you had advanced knowledge of 9-11. Do you agree or disagree with the RNC that this kind of rhetoric borders on political hate speech? Yeah. Uh, look, there's time for politics. And, uh, you know, it's time for politics. And uh, I, uh, it's an absurd insinuation. In that case, sir, can I follow up on something unrelated? Uh, <laughs>